Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today, inshallah, we're going to solve Cambridge exam, May, June 2023, paper 61. Let's start it. Question 1. Ethanol can be made by fermentation of sugars found in plants. A byproduct of fermentation is carbon dioxide gas. Byproduct means a side product format. The main product is ethanol and the byproduct is carbon dioxide. Here are the steps that the student made to form ethanol. Cut some sugar cane and crush it. Add hot water to the sugar cane and stir to dissolve the sugar to obtain a sugar solution. Then remove the solid from the mixture. Let sugar cane solution cool and then add the yeast. Place the mixture obtained in the apparatus shown in the figure 1.1. Then leave it until the fermentation is completed. The first question is, Name the items of name the item of apparatus labeled A. A of course is a conical flask. Here we have the conical flask which contains the sugar solution and the yeast. So ethanol will be produced here inside the conical flask, and carbon dioxide gas will be bubbled through lime water in this test tube. So we can see the bubbles of carbon dioxide. Explain why hot water rather than cold water is used in step two. In step two, we use hot water to dissolve the sugar from the sugar cane. So, of course, hot water will dissolve the sugar faster. Name the method used to remove the solid from the mixture in step three and draw a diagram to show how this is done. The solid in step three, which is the crushed sugar cane bases. So, any undissolved solid, of course, can be removed by filtration. So, the name of the process is filtration and here we have... A diagram to show filtration we can remove the undissolved solid by using a filter funnel and filter paper we will have the undissolved solid on the filter paper and the sugar solution of course will be in the flask state why the sugar solution is allowed to cool before yeast is added in step 4 because the high temperature, of course, will denature the yeast enzyme. So we have to leave it to cool first. The optimum temperature for the yeast enzyme is about 37, but the high temperature will denature the yeast enzyme. Describe how the apparatus, sorry, how the appearance of the lime water change as the fermentation takes place. Of course, carbon dioxide gas bubbled through the lime water will change the lime water into turbid or milky. So the color change from colorless to milky. Describe how the student could tell that the fermentation is complete. When the fermentation is completed, we cannot see any more bubbles of carbon dioxide gas in the lime water that indicate that the fermentation stopped or finished. So he can tell when no more bubbles are formed. So the fermentation is complete. Now, name the process used to separate ethanol from the mixture obtained by fermentation. The mixture here is a mixture of liquids. We have sugar solution and ethanol, so mixture of liquid can be separated by fractional distillation. We can separate, separate ethanol from the mixture with a sugar solution by fractional distillation. Question 2. The student investigate the reaction between aqueous ammonia and two different aqueous solutions of copper sulfate. We have two solutions of copper sulfate labeled A and B, and we have different concentrations. So we want to compare the concentration of the copper sulfate solutions, the two solutions A and B. The first experiment, we will fill the purette with solution A, then run, run some of the solution A from the purette, so the level of the solution A is on the purette scale then record the initial reading. Use a measuring cylinder to put 25 centimeter cube of aqueous ammonia in the conical flask and stand the conical flask on a white tile. Slowly add solution A from the purette to the conical flask, of course while swirling the flask until the mixture in the conical flask just to start plowing. Record the final purette reading. We will repeat this experiment, of course, for solution B, but before making experiment two, we have first to empty the conical flask and rinse it with distilled water. Then, we'll, of course, we will rinse the purette with distilled water 
and again we will rinse it with solution B before adding solution B to the current. After that we will repeat experiment using solution B instead of solution A. Here we have the diagram for experiment 1 to show the initial and the final reading of the pirate. The initial reading here is 0.6 and the final reading is 18.3. This is for experiment 1 and for experiment 2 we have the initial reading is 9.2 and the final reading is 21. Here we have to complete the table to show the initial and the final reading. For experiment 1 the initial reading is 0.6 and the final reading is 18.3 so subtract the final minus the initial to get the total volume of copper sulfate solution A used, which is 17.7. We will do the same for experiment 2. The solution of copper sulfate B is 11.8. Explain a white tile is used during the titration. White tile is like a white paper placed under the conical flask to make it easier and more clear to see the color change. In experiment 2, the purette and the conical flask are both rinsed with water and the purette is rinsed with solution B also. State why both the purette and the conical flask are rinsed with water. We will rinse the purette with water to remove solution A and of course we can rinse the flask with water to clean the flask. And again we have to rinse the purette with solution B to remove water because of course if we leave water in the purette this will affect the total volume of the purette, adding incorrect volume to the purette. So if I subtract the initial read, the final reading minus the initial reading, I will have wrong reading because there is small volume of water still remain in the purette. So after washing the purette with water, I have to again wash it or rinse it with solution B. Describe how the result of the experiment 2 would differ if the conical flask is raised with aqueous ammonia after rinsed with water. The situation is different for the conical flask. We have to rinse the conical flask only with water but not with ammonia. Rinse it with water to remove any residue from the first experiment or to clean the flask from the first experiment but we cannot rinse it with ammonia because this will add the more volume of ammonia or the volume of ammonia in the conical flask will be higher than the 25 centimeter cube and this of course will need more solution B to neutralize ammonia so this will affect the result of experiment 2 because more solution B will be needed to neutralize the higher volume of ammonia added to the conical flask so the conical flask has to be rinsed only with water but not with ammonia because with this will affect the uh, result of the experiment more solution B will be needed deduce the solution which solution of copper sulfate A or B is more concentrated and you have to explain your answer if you go back to the reading of the two experiment we will find that solution B is more concentrated because a smaller volume of the solution is used to neutralize ammonia smaller volume of solution B is used to neutralize the ammonia in the flask. So we will go back to solution B. We will find only 11.8 centimeter cube of the solution B is used uh, and in experiment 1 we need 17.7. So of course solution B is more concentrated because a smaller volume is used. How many times more concentrated this solution of copper sulfate than the other solution? So we will divide 17.7 by 11.8. We can find that it is 1.5 more concentrated. That means the volume of the solution A is greater by 1.5 than solution B. Solution B is 1.5 more concentrated than solution A. Describe how the reliability of the results obtained can be checked. We can repeat the experiment and take the average or compare the results. Deduce the volume of solution A required when experiment 1 is carried out with 10 cm3 of aqueous ammonia. We will use 10 cm3 instead of 25 cm3 of ammonia. First we have 25 cm3 neutralized by 17.7 so 
when we use 10 cm3 only of ammonia by cross multiplication we can find that we will need only 7.1 cm3 of solution A so here we have this question is for two marks take care that one mark will be for the correct value which is 7.1 and the second mark will be for the unit which is centimeter cube in experiment one and two the volume of aqueous ammonia is measured using a measuring cylinder given advantage and disadvantage of using the volumetric pipette instead of the measuring cylinder to measure the volume of aqueous ammonia of course the purette is more accurate than the measuring cylinder and this is the advantage and the disadvantage that the pipette is much slower and it will take longer time for measuring the volume question three a student test two solid we have solid e and solid f first we will make the test on solid e and here we have a table to show the test and the observations first Gently heat half of the solid E in a boiling tube, a solution forms, and a steam is given off and a condensation formed at the top of the test tube. So when we heat solid E, we will found steam formed on the top or the mouth of the test tube and drops showing condensation formed at the top of the test tube means that the solid E contain water. Of course, this is the water of crystallization, so we can understand from test one that solid E is hydrated solid. Then test two, we will dissolve the uh, solid E in water to form solution and we'll divide it into three portions to make three experiments. The first one, the first portion of solution E, we will add aqueous sodium hydroxide dropwise and in excess. We will found a brown precipitate forms which remain in excess, brown precipitate which not dissolve in excess that means we will have iron three ions for the solution format and test two we will warm the product of test two and test any gas produced warming the solution contain solid uh, solution e and sodium hydroxide will produce a gas that turn red litmus paper to blue of course this gas is ammonia gas Warming the solution with sodium hydroxide produce ammonia gas, that means the solution contain ammonium ions. Heating, uh, warming ammonium ions with sodium hydroxide will produce ammonia gas, which turns the red litmus paper to blue. Then test four, the second portion of solution E, we will add dilute nitric acid followed by silver nitrate. The observation no change means we don't have halide ions no chloride or bromide or iodide ions so no result with silver nitrate test 5 to the third portion of solution e we will add dilute nitric acid followed by barium nitrate we have white preservative of course this white preservative characteristic for the presence of sulfate ions because sulfate form a white precipitate of barium sulfate which is insoluble so this white precipitate indicates the presence of sulfate ions state what conclusion can be made about solid e from the observation in test one uh, already we explained test one we can understand that the solid e is a hydrated solid because the condensation formed at the top of the test tube identify the gas produced in test three here the gas, of course, is ammonia gas that turns red litmus paper to blue. State what conclusion can be made about solid E from the observation in test 4. Here in test 4, we have no change uh, by using nitric acid and aqueous silver nitrate. The observation means that we have no halide ions. Solution E doesn't contain any halide ions, as we've just said. Identify the three ions present in solid E. Here first we have iron plus three ions. Then here of course ammonium ions that produce ammonia gas. And as we said the, we have sulfate ions. So the three ions present here in solid E. Iron three ions, ammonium ions and sulfate ions. Here are the three ions we have to represent it with the, the correct charges of the ions then we will go for a test on solid f here we know that solid f is zinc sulfide and this is the formula of 
zinc sulfide. Complete the expected observation here. First, we will dissolve solid F in water to form solution F, and the student divides solution F into three portions. The first portion, we will add ammonia dropwise until in excess. Here, we are testing for zinc ions. Zinc will give zinc ions will give white precipitate with ammonia, and this precipitate will dissolve in excess. So these are the two observations for the first test. Then to the second portion, the student add few drops of acidified aqueous potassium manganate, and this is a test for sulfide ions. The sulfide change the color of the potassium manganate from purple to colorless. To the third portion of solution F, the student add one centimeter depth of dilute nitric acid followed by aqueous barium nitrate. This is, of course, the test for sulfate ions, and here we don't have any sulfates, so this will give no result. We can find the observation no change because there is no sulfate ion. Question 4. Solid cobalt 2 oxide is a base which is insoluble in water. It reacts very slowly with cold dilute sulfuric acid to form a solution of cold sulfate. Describe how to make pure dry crystals of hydrated cobalt sulfate. So we wanted pure, dry, and hydrated. We are provided with cobalt 2 oxide, dilute sulfuric acid, and common laboratory apparatus. So this is the method of preparation of a soluble salt, cobalt sulfate, by using the excess method or the neutralization method. And it's already mentioned here that the cobalt oxide reacts very slowly with cold dilute sulfuric acid. So we have to heat or warm sulfuric acid first before doing the experiment. So we'll first add a certain volume of sulfuric acid in a beaker, warm the sulfuric acid. Then we have to add excess of the solid cobalt oxide in a beaker to the warm sulfuric acid. After that, we have to filter to remove the excess cobalt oxide. We will have a solution of cobalt sulfate in water. This is the filtrate. We have to heat the filtrate until the crystallization point. This can be known when the solution becomes very concentrated or when we reach to saturated solution. We can see the crystal on the surface of the solution or we can use a glass rod to test for the crystallization point. Dip the glass rod into the solution and get it outside. When it cools, we can find small crystals formed on the glass rod. That means we reach to the crystallization point. We can stop heating and allow the solution to cool, then filter out the crystals and dry it between two filter papers. These are the steps for preparation of pure dry crystals of hydrated cobalt sulfate. Here we reach to the end of our exam. Uh, comment down below if you have any questions. Thank you for watching. Wish you all best of luck.